Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In the previous video, we finished logging and registering with a JWT. In this video, we're going to see how we can personalize content using the claims in those JWTs. Now, the amazing part about JWTs is you can just check the signature of the JWT and verify that this is a legitimate signed JWT. This means that we can trust whatever is in there because we issued this, or at least the authentication server issued it. So for that reason, we can take anything in there called the claim and use it for our application. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use a user ID to create posts for a specific user, potentially see posts from a specific user. So the first thing I will need to do is go to the data context and I'm going to add an extra property in the post object. And this will be a string user ID. And um, I will also add this property here called identity user and that way if I add the foreign key attribute and I point towards my foreign key property name of now anti framework will know that this property is a foreign key to the identity user and will create all the indexes and the constraints we need for this so with that out of the way, let's see what happens when we issue a token. So in the identity service, we use an ID claim and this is the user ID. Let me just go ahead and rename this to just user. And this is a claim that we can use then to get the user ID from the token. And the way we can do this is I'm going to create a directory called extensions. And in there, I'm going to make a class called, for now, general extensions. Not a great name, not a terrible name. And I'm going to create a public string, actually static string, because it's an extension method, get user ID. And I will get this from the HTTP context. And the HTTP context is just a bunch of properties uh, about the current HTTP request in the controller or in our application in general. So first things first, I want to check if the HTTP context dot user equals null return string dot empty. So there is no user ID, but if uh, there is one, I'm going to say return HTTP context dot user dot claims single and I'm using single because there should be only one with the name ID and get its value and return that and this will return the user ID from the token because the claims will automatically be bound to this object called user. So with that added what I will do is take a look at my controllers and especially the post controller. We added the authorize attribute, which means that anything in here in order to be accessed will need an, a valid token. But what, the, what we haven't done is we haven't limited the updating, deleting and creating to a specific user. So the easiest thing to do is add the user ID here and the user ID is coming from the HTTP context dot get user ID. This context comes from the base class and um, it's part of every controller. So that is enough in that sense. Now what we need to do for the update and the delete is we need to make sure that this user actually owns this post. So user owns post is uh, the property and I will make a new method called user owns post async and this will accept the post ID and the user ID and this will return a boolean saying whether that's true or false so let's go ahead and make this method it will return a boolean and I will implement in derived classes and I will say first make this async and of course I need to get the post, so post equals data context dot post single or default async. 
but I don't actually want my uh, this specific post to be tracked. That's why I'm not using this method. And for that reason, I'm going to say as no tracking. This will disable anti framework from tracking this object with this ID. And we do this because we're going to update or delete it and we don't want any conflicts. So with that out of the way, we're going to say if post equals null, return false because you don't own something that doesn't exist. And then if post dot ID is not actually sorry if post dot user ID is not the get user ID which I would rename to just user ID yes then return false else return true and this will tell us whether the user owns the post or not so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if the user doesn't actually own the post then return i'm just gonna say an anonymous object so create this anonymous object with error equals you do not own this post and again we're gonna make this better in a future video we're gonna talk about error contracts and successful contracts and response bodies but for now we're just gonna make this uh, if that's not the case then and I don't like the way we do this actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the post and I'm gonna say post equals await post service get post by ID and I'm gonna use the post ID to get it. And I'm gonna say post.name equals to request eh, request.name and then update that. And I'm going to copy the same piece of code and I'm only going to delete this if the user owns it. So let's go ahead and build this. That is not all, of course. I will also have to add migrations to my empty framework database and that's because we just added an extra field in a DTO. In this case, it's a domain object, but we treat it as a DTO. So I'm going to say .NET EF migrations add. And I'm going to name this added user ID in posts. So if I do that, it should add an extra migration here with this new field. So I successfully created it. If I click here, it should refresh. I'll just, yeah. So if I clean rebuild, you can actually see this here. So this was successfully built. Now, I don't want to manually update my database every time I add a migration. So for simplicity, I will do something here. However, you should not, in a production database, run migrations on startup. You should be controlling them. But for this project, I will be enabling startup migrations. Now, keep in mind, if you are going to do it, you should be doing it in the program.cs, not the startup.cs, the program.cs. So we're going to get the host. I'm going to say the host is this and I'm going to split the initialization of the host to a separate line. I'm going to say await host dot run async and to, for a way to work and you change this to async task. And then in here, I will do using var service scope equals host dot services dot create scope. And we're going to make a scope unique for this uh, purpose. And I'm going to say var db uh, context. And I'm going to get, I should be doing this on every video, but okay. Service provider get required service data context. And this will give us the db context. So I'm going to say db context dot uh, database dot migrate async and this will run all the migrations that haven't been run in the beginning so if i clean rebuild this again and i run this i did clean up the database uh before this video so i we should be recreating everything let's see how that looks yes there is a new database and if i select this i should see yep all our migrations are run i have 
this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to register because we cannot access this without being authenticated. So I'm going to make this account and get the JWT. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a post. So as you can see, there are none now. I would need to. Yep. OK, so no post. So let's create one. My new post goes here. And as you can see, this is created. Now, if I refresh posts, you can see that my user ID now is here and you can see that it's me 3C8, 3C8. So here you go. And what I want to do is I want to get this ID of this post. And I am going to use it to update this. So this is my updated post. And as you can see, this is now updated. We can see the new value here. And last but not least, in fact, I won't delete this because updating and uh, update and delete has the same code. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out and I'm going to register with a different one called test2. And now this test2 is a completely different user. And I want to show you what will happen if I try to actually update something that doesn't belong to me. So this is the post that does not belong to me. And if I use, sorry, the same thing I tried to do before. So my updated post, but not from Nick. And I execute this, you get an error, but request, you do not own this post. So you can actually not manipulate this unless you own it. And that's how you would personalize content. Con tent in this application. The idea is that if you actually had your user ID as a parameter in the post request, then people could fake this user ID if they found the ID of somebody else. But they cannot fake the ID in the claim of this token because the server knows that this is a signed token that he issued himself. So this makes our application very secure in terms of who accesses that. And we can simply get the claims by accessing them with a simple extension method, as you could see in the extensions that we just made here. You could get any claim this way. This is it for this video. Leave a like if you liked it, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding.